I'm going to introduce the next act now, ladies and gentlemen. He's called Andy Delator. That's French for tower block. <laughs> um, so, uh, welcome, please, for Andy Delator. <laughs> um, I want to um, move on to a lighter topic. Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> more, speci more specifically, the TV coverage of Northern Ireland. Have you noticed how Northern Ireland is played down on the news? Right? Items about Northern Ireland, other news come last, after the football is out. Right? <laughs> Even after the items about the giant pandas can't fornicate. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> and this is because, you see, the TV companies have a policy of telling us that what's going on in Northern Ireland is a minor civil disorder. Whereas, in truth, there's been a war going on. Right? OK. So let's imagine, what would the BBC broadcast have sounded like during World War II <laughs> <laughs> you remember World War II? <laughs> if they'd reported that war with the same attitude, right? Good evening, here is the six o'clock news. In the disturbances in Western Europe today, <laughs> there was a short delay in the cross-channel ferry service from Dunkirk. <laughs> ah, news flash. Two bombs went off today in the predominantly Japanese towns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. <laughs> Can you imagine the 1944 edition of Police 5? Hello. <laughs> now, was anybody here in the vicinity of the High Street Yalta at 3 o'clock last Saturday afternoon? <laughs> now, if you were, you may have seen three very suspicious looking men. One in a wheelchair, one smoking a large cigar, and the third with a thick Russian accent answering to the name of Uncle Joe. Now, <laughs> an unusual case this week. It concerns the theft of most of Central and Eastern Europe. <laughs> which police believes lies somewhere between Leytonstone Station and the Baltic Sea. <laughs> Another thought I had, can you imagine, you see, if they'd only admit, if they'd only admit that there has been this war going on in Northern Ireland for the last ten years, look at the film they could have made, right? In that fine old tradition of British war movies, right? <laughs> Scene one, a battleship cruises down the Falls Road. <laughs> Sitting on top, on the bridge, two men. Kenneth Moore in a duffel coat. <laughs> Paddy's being damned quiet tonight, number one. <laughs> but number one doesn't hear. He's dead. He's been dead for a week, but he doesn't fall over. He's British. <laughs> over at Long Cash, looking for a 15-foot fence to jump over Steve McQueen on his motorbike. <laughs> 14 feet below, Tunnel Harry is being dug. And when he meets up with Tunnel George and Tunnel Edward, they form one section they call it the Jubilee Line, only after Baker Street. Eh? <laughs> Problems on Tunnel Edward, somebody's put graffiti all over it. Revlon kills rabbits. Tunnel George, <laughs> dug by eight men, they're all claustrophobic. <laughs> it's 600 feet wide. I've got a roof, reaches the open air. John Mills rushes across the compound, pausing only slightly by a group of men who are gardening. He empties his trouser leg. <laughs> <laughs> he rushes into Hut 18 with the escape committee a meeting. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. I'm sorry. My God, sir. The escape's off. We can't escape. Pull yourself together, man. You're not at Ealing Studios now. What is it? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. We can't escape. Why can't we escape, man? We can't escape, sir. Because we're the bloody guards. <laughs> <laughs>